These eye drops actually do make it so you don't need to wear reading glasses when you're looking up close, but they're not for everyone. If you saw my last video about this, it might have looked like it was a complete failure, but that's not really fair because the drops do work. It's just that there are some exceptions. The eye drops are called Viz, and some patients love them. Let me show you who these drops will work well for, and who these drops probably won't work for. And also, what about these drops could theoretically make this kind of dangerous for certain people? I don't need no reading glasses. This First, about how this works. This drug goes in and it acts on the iris sphincter muscle, so it kind of constricts that. It's called a cholinergic muscarinic agonist. And what it does is it goes in there and it finds certain receptors and it makes muscles contract. Now it's supposed to be selective for that iris sphincter, but I found that it kind of acts on more than just that. More on that later. It changes that pupil size and makes it smaller and it improves that depth of focus. It creates a little bit of a pinhole effect. And that's really powerful. I don't know if you've ever done that where you don't have glasses and you just make a small hole with your fingers and you look at something so you can read it. So just looking through a small hole makes it so you can see better. It, it kind of uses that same principle and it's really effective. Other companies have made eye drops to do this. They've all used pilocarpine and that is a different medication that constricts the pupil and it, it does work. The problem I've run into with pilocarpine drops is that generally it just didn't last long enough for patients to be satisfied to make it worth their while and a little bit more issues with headaches. Viz lasts up to 10 hours and the headache issues were much milder, though I do get some complaints of a little bit of headaches with patients. I had a little bit of one. Usually it's not too much and it's within that first hour and the more you use it, the less you get that side effect. There are other side effects. That redness was pretty bad, huh? But that was the first time. Every time you use it, that redness becomes less and less. Within a week or two, the redness is maybe gone within 20 minutes and it's much milder. You can use Lumify eye drops to make it look white right away, but in the long run, you won't have to. It does diminish. So that side effect is, seems significant right away, but it gets to be much more reasonable over time. Everyone I've prescribed this to or that I've had try it has reported that they do get redness and they've all reported that it's improved significantly as they've continued to use it. Most of them have reported mild headaches. No one's had significant headaches. Now, if you have the ability to focus up close still, what I mean by that is if you look at your phone and you stare at it and you can focus it and bring it into focus, like it starts out blurry and then clears up, that means you have the ability to engage your focusing system. That could be a problem if you're using this drop. And this is the problem I ran into. I was seeing 2020 in the distance and then the eye drop, this muscarinic agonist came in. It attached to the muscle that engages my focusing system that normally is used for seeing up close. And when it did that, I couldn't disengage it. So when I looked far away, instead of seeing 2020, I was suddenly seeing 2050. So much worse. What that generally seems to mean to me is that if you have mild presbyopia. What I mean by that is if you, when you reach for reading glasses, are reaching for less than a plus 150, this might not work well for you. Now I know the company says that it will work great for mild presbyopic patients, but so far I haven't found anyone where that's worked well for them. If it's worked well for you and you have mild need for reading glasses, please let me know in the comments section so I can know and learn from your experience. But so far, that seems like a group that is less likely to work well with this drop. At a minimum, if you're going to try this out, learn from my mistake and don't put it in and then head out the door to go drive somewhere because it will be very hard to see anything. Now, if you have trouble reading up close and you're reaching for plus 1.5 or more higher numbers, in that case, you might be a great candidate for this eye drop. Your focusing system isn't going to be engaging and causing problems for you far away. So it will make it so you can see up close because the pupils will constrict and it will just kind of work how it's supposed to. That is, as long as you're okay with the vision being a little bit more dim. That's something that I have heard from everyone so far. The vision is dimmer and I noticed that as well. Your pupils are just smaller, they're letting less light in. If you work in an area that's just dim, or if you are gonna be more bothered by that, then you probably won't like the drops very much. Most people are fine with it. If you like the clarity of it, but you feel like it is too dim, I do have two tricks that you can try. The first one, you can just try putting the drop in your non-dominant eye only. So you're gonna have one eye, a little bit different pupil size, 
It might look a little funny depending on how light colored your eyes are, but it's definitely worth a try because that has worked well for some people. You'll have a dim eye and a brighter eye, but usually our dominant eye is a little brighter anyway, so that might work out just fine for you. It's not too hard to get used to that. The other thing you could try to do is just put in one drop in each eye because it's generally dosed, put a drop in each eye, wait for two to four minutes and then put another drop in each eye and then you're done for the day. So you can just put in one drop and you get a little bit less of an effect and that could still give you that clarity but not quite as much dimming. And then the last thing you could try is to do that in just one eye. So you do one drop in just your non-dominant eye. And if that doesn't work, what you could try is, is to get these things called reading glasses and you put those on when you read and when you're not reading, you take off your reading glasses. It's good to have the right expectations for this drop. It works by clarifying the vision, improving the depth of focus, not by magnifying it. So this won't make it look like you have reading glasses on. If you look at something and it's small, it will still be small. It will just be clearer. There is one theoretical risk I think is worth going over and at least being aware of. Because it acts on the focusing system, it has to just inherently include the risks of doing that. So pilocarpine, uh, which has been around for a long time, it does that same thing, it constricts the pupil uh, and it engages the focusing system. It has this potential increased risk of retinal detachments. The reason for that is because it can cause this traction on the retina. Now the risk is super low and kind of arguable, but it does exist and it's something to be aware of. Anyone who's a high myope, so what I mean by that is someone who has a minus seven or more nearsighted prescription, or if they have a history of retinal detachment or retinal tears or even just thin retinas, I'll mention to them there's this theoretical risk and you should be aware of all the symptoms of retinal detachment. You should be aware of those symptoms anyway, especially if you're high risk for those. So flashes of light, increased floating shadows, uh, a curtain or a veil in the vision, those are things you need to get in right away if that's the case because it's time sensitive. If you do have a retinal detachment, you need to get in and that needs to be fixed because it causes permanent vision loss can't be fixed, you wanna prevent loss. So, I think the risk of this happening for Viz is really, really low. They did big studies and nothing happened to anyone in their studies, but it's not impossible. Just because of how this drug works, I think it's important enough for you at least to know, especially if you're in that high risk category, just kind of be aware of that. So should you try Viz? Well, if you're reaching for your reading glasses all the time, I think that it's worth a shot. It works really well, side effects aren't that bad, and they all decrease over time. I think if you're interested in it, you should definitely talk to your eye doctor about it and give it a shot and see what you think. If this is helpful or interesting at all and you want to be notified about new videos about different eye conditions that we're seeing and different treatments, then go ahead and make sure you subscribe so that you can be notified about those. If you've tried Viz or Vuity or any of these eye drops and you've had some different experiences with it, leave a note in the comment section so I can learn from your experiences. I'm always interested to hear more about those things. Thanks for watching.